The title is, today is Listen With Your Heart. And um, you missed the first part, Rami. That was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the teaching really is to believe in the promises of God and to be strengthened in faith. And we know that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word. And in, um, in John 6, 63, it says... The word is spirit, it is truth. So this is all the Holy Spirit, not to deviate from what we're, we're, we're focusing on the Holy Spirit in different aspects and from different perspectives. And um, so to listen with your heart. Um, and with m &S at the beginning and a long time ago, I just want to repeat again what it really means. One of the ways one of the ways we can listen with our heart is by meditating, meditating on the word of God. And that is after we hear any share, any teaching, to linger, to linger with the Holy Spirit. I can turn off, I'll repeat it, I can turn off my, my iPad, but then instead of running down to the kitchen, linger, linger with the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit, what did you want to reveal to me today? I know this is a repetition of what I've been saying, but you know, we're like children. When we repeat, 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 it'll get down into our hearts, you know? So when we hear something, even in a conversation with, you know, with Margo, Manju, Pat, uh, Margie, even with a conversation, as we're on that continual fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, Linga, what did you want to tell me through that conversation, Holy Spirit? Did you want to share something with me? So it's to linger with the Holy Spirit, then ask the Holy Spirit, what did you want? Give me the Rema word, and then listen to what he tells us and write it down. And then we ask the Holy Spirit, seal your word, the word of life in my heart. And then we believe it, we receive it, and we pray it. Just like Manju was when she was praying now that we have received all spiritual blessings. That is believing, receiving, and praying the word, the living word. We can, you know, when it says in Jude, you know, building up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit is not only tongues, but is also praying the word, the word of God, the word of life. So uh, to believe, receive, and pray it, and then Share it, just like the cheesecake. Share it when you've got a new car, a new house. <laughs> you want to invite people along. Look at this garden to share. When we share, it's a step of faith also because we can believe it in our hearts. But when we confess, when we speak it out, and you know, sometimes speaking to yourself, you know, it's more interesting if I go over to Margot's place and say, hey, Margot, listen to this <laughs> and share. So it's important to share. And so today I'm looking at a scripture, a, a word that comes up again and again and again in the word of God, which says, uh, he that has ears to hear, we know that it's in Revelation here, he that has ears to hear, hear, hear or listen. Some of the translation says, listen to what the spirit is saying. And we can do that when we linger with the Holy Spirit. Just lingering, it doesn't have to be long, to linger with the Holy Spirit and ask him what he wants to reveal to our hearts and to seal it, to make it like that, it says in James, the implanted word, the implanted word that can heal our emotions, our souls. So in Luke chapter 8, verse 8, in Luke, I will be going through the Passion and the Amplified. In Luke chapter 8, verse 8, it says in the New King James, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. In the Passion, in the Passion, it says, um, verse 8, listen with your heart and you will understand. 
This is um, chapter eight of Luke and also in Matthew is the parable about the sower of the seed. Some that fell on good ground, some fell on rocky ground. Here in the, um, in the Passion, it says, um, other seed fell where there was nothing but weeds. It too was unable to grow to full maturity. Maturity. For it was choked out by the weeds. Yet some of the seed fell into good fertile soil and it grew and flourished and it produced more than a hundredfold harvest. Then Jesus added, shouting, that really in the New King James it says, Jesus cried out. Here in the Passion it says he was shouting. So that's to call attention. He was, he added, and then he's shouting out to all who would hear, to everybody who would listen. Listen with your heart and you will understand. Listen with your heart and you will understand. And in verse 10 in the Passion, Jesus again is speaking and he says, um, you have been given a teachable heart to perceive the secret, hidden mysteries of God's kingdom's realm. Because before that, the disciples were saying, you know, they came to Jesus and said, you know, what deeper meaning can be found in this parable? And Jesus answered them with his own words. You've been given a, given a teachable heart to perceive the secret hidden mysteries of the kingdom. And we know that we've been given the Holy Spirit to reveal the hidden mysteries, the secrets of Father's heart. That's why it's so important that we continue, all of us, that fellowshipping. He's our best friend, that fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. He, is, he reveals to us the secrets of Father's hearts. And so in, um, in verse 11, uh, Jesus, uh, again, it says, um, here then is the deeper meaning of my parable. And this is Jesus explaining to his disciples. The word of God is the seed that is sown into hearts. And he talks about the hardened hearts of men, the seed falling on gravel and on stony ground. But then at the end, he says, the seed that falls into the weeds, this is verse 14. The seed that falls into the weeds represents the hearts of those who hear the word of God, but their growth is quickly choked off. Their growth is quickly choked off by their own anxious cares, the riches of this world, and the fleeting pleasures. This is why they never become mature and fruitful. Meditating, meditating on the word day and night. This is why, and these are the words of Jesus, they never become mature and fruitful. The seed that fell into good fertile soil represents those lovers of truth who hear it deep within their hearts and they respond by clinging to the word, keeping it dear as they endure all things in faith. This is the, feet, this is the seed that will one day bear much fruit in their lives. Wow, if you have a, a, a passion, you know, even in the New King James, to read this, to meditate on this, to see what Jesus is saying. First of all, he was shouting. He said, listen with your hearts. <laughs> then he was giving a, 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 telling his disciples, you've been a, a given teachable spirits and he wants us to come to maturity. That doesn't mean to be perfect. No, as it, in Philippians, it says he will perfect that which concerns each one of us. But that word perfect means he will complete. He has a complete plan for, plan for Rami. He has a complete plan plan for Margot, for Manju, for each one of us, but it's complete according to his plan. It doesn't mean to be perfect, it means to, to, to complete. So um, let me see. So this is, uh, this is Jesus speaking, and I did say it in the Amplified. Uh, let's see, in Luke 8.8 8 in the Amplified, uh, it says, uh, okay, and some seed fell into good soil and grew up, that means they matured, and yielded a crop of a hundred times as great. 
as he said these things, he called out. Ah, I'm reading the wrong verse, isn't I? He who has ears to hear, listen. The verse that I just read was 15. So in the Amplified, it says the following. As for the seed, these are the words of the explanation of Jesus himself. As for the seed in the good soil, these are the people who hearing the word hold it fast in a just, noble, virtuous and worthy heart and steadily bring forth fruit with patience. Here we see that word again with patience, faith and patience. So patience in many ways, in many, in many places in the word of God means endurance. So, and he still steadily brings forth fruit with patience. Um, to continue, uh, I want to read in the, this will be our prayer, at the end actually from the new king james which it says in luke it says the ones that fell that's the seeds that fell on the good ground of those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart a noble and good heart we've been studying about the heart give us a noble and good heart to receive the seed of the living word who keep it, that means we obey it. Who keep it and bear fruit with patience, with endurance. So those, that's a scripture too, in whatever version that you have, but it's in Luke chapter 8, verse, verse, um, verse 15. It could, you could read 14 and 15, 14 and 15 in Luke verse 8. And so here we, we, we hear that, that lingering with the Holy Spirit for the revelation is so important and to share it and there is a scripture in John chapter 15 verse 8 John chapter 15 verse 8 I don't know if I've got it in another scripture I have the passion and it says in this my father is glorified that you bear much fruit that's John chapter 15, verse 8. In this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit. And in the Amplified, it says, chapter 8 of John, verse 15. When your lives or when our lives bear abundant fruit, we demonstrate that we are, that uh, that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. I'll read that again. Jesus is saying, when your lives bear abundant fruit, you demonstrate that you are my mature disciples who glorify my father. MS, let us meditate in the word, uh, meditating in the word. So that is. Uh, uh, John, John 15, verse 8. And we know that the fruit of the Spirit is Galatians 5.22. Love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness. The fruit of the Spirit. And we glorify our Father when we bring forth, when we bear fruit. And um, so we go now to Psalm one, Psalm one, I'll be finishing it soon. And I'll say it in the New King James first. It says, you know, when we meditate, meditate, and it's not an option, it's a command, like he gave to, to Joshua. Meditate in my word day and night, so that you will be able to do all that I have commanded you, Joshua, in the word of God. It, that has a bit of a, a different a different perspective to to Psalm one because when when God was talking to Joshua, he's, he's telling Joshua about three or four times in chapter chapter one, uh, verse eight, and then I think at the end, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. Meditate in my word, day and night, so that 
let, let me just read it for here so that, you know, as a good father, you know, when you tell your children to do something, you know, don't go near the stove so that you don't burn your fingers, you know, or go to the bank and say this so that they'll attend to you quickly. Or, you know, there's always a so that. I think we miss in the English translations the so that's of the word of God. In Spanish, it comes out all the, all the time. Da, 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 so that. Stop grumbling and complaining, as it says in Philippians chapter two. Stop grumbling and complaining so that you can shine as lights in this darkened world. So there's lots of so for that. So in Joshua um, chapter one, verse, uh, I haven't actually read it, verse uh, eight. Is it verse eight? Uh -huh. Be strong and courageous. This, of the, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, so that, I'll put the so, so that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall deal, deal wisely and have good success. So here's God talking to Joshua, and he's telling the reason why, why he should meditate day and night so that he may observe to do, observe to do. And in Psalm 1, we, say, we see in the Amplified, Psalm 1, verses 2 and 3. Our delight and desire are in the law of the Lord, and on his law, his instructions and teachings, we habitually meditate, ponder, and study by day and by night, and we shall be like trees firmly planted by the streams of water, ready, prepared. God is preparing his ecclesia, his church. We will be ready to bring forth its fruit in its season, and its leaves shall not fade or wither, and everything we do shall prosper and come to maturity. Oh, and come to maturity. That is awesome. And what does it say in the Passion? I think I have it in the Passion too. And it says, uh, Psalm 1, verses 2, and I'll put it in the we. Our pleasure and our passion is remaining true to the word of I am meditating day and night in his true revelation of light. We will be standing firm like flourishing trees planted by God's design, deeply rooted by the brooks of bliss, bearing fruit in every season. There are seasons in our lives. We are in a season now. As we meditate in the word of God day and night, we, have, we are passionate about it. We will bear fruit in every season of our lives and we will never be dry, never fainting, ever blessed and every ever prosperous. Wow, that is awesome. That is awesome. And it's not difficult because we're, we're walking with the Holy Spirit. We're talking with the Holy Spirit all the time. And he nudges me sometimes. If, you know, he'll say, where's your mind? And then I'll think, I'm looking at somebody and I'm thinking, well, that's not right. And this, that, and the other. And then I'm judging. And, you know, he'll probably judge me. Where's your mind? Pray for him. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, send laborers to him. But, you know, so he nudges us. It's, we're not alone. He's with us. He's walking with us. He's talking with us. Every moment, every moment of the time. And uh, so we, 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 we're talking about every season and being ready. In the Amplified, it says to be ready. And in the Passion, it says that, you know, we will, we will be mature in every season of our lives. And um, so uh, just as Jeremiah said, I found your words and ate them. And it, your word was the joy and rejoicing of our hearts. So I pray, this is, I'm finishing. I pray that, that we find his word and together with the Holy Spirit, we receive the revelation, the rema, 
that is implanted in our hearts as we linger with him, as we believe and pray and we, we ask him to seal it upon our hearts and we share his word, that it would be the joy and the rejoicing of our hearts always and prayer. Holy Spirit, just as I love what Manju did and I know that many of us do, but when we receive the word of God, the rema of the word of God and the spirit of truth, convert it into a prayer. So we say, Holy Spirit, you are our helper and our teacher. That's written. As Jesus said in the wilderness, Satan, it is written. So, and he spoke the written word. So we speak the word of truth. Holy Spirit, you are our helper and teacher. Teach us to hear, to listen to the word with a noble and good heart, to keep it and to bear fruit with patience and endurance. In the name of Jesus, bless you all.